everyone, it's Tammy Pally, aka the Crafty Princess and Doll Collector, and this is a dolly crafting video. Uh, some of you probably know if you've been watching some of my videos lately, I opened a kawaii doll shop over at Etsy recently, and some of the items I've had in there have been uh, Halloween dresses, because of course Halloween's coming up, I'm filming this at the beginning of October in 2018, and so... I sold a couple of these dresses. These are the two I have in the shop right now, but there were some similar ones that I had in there that sold. And when I did, I tossed in, for as a little swag, a trick-or-treat bag. And one of my customers wrote me back, and she really liked the trick-or-treat bag. And I thought, you know, I should just do a little video to show you guys how to make these. It's a really great way to use up your scraps, and you don't have to have tons of sewing experience to make them. Um, so, And they look really cute with dresses like this, of course. All right, so let me put these aside and just real quickly talk about some of the supplies you need. Um, you're going to need some scissors. Uh, if you notice that this has uh, serrated edges, so you're going to need a pair of serrated scissors if you want to do that. You could also just leave it raw. It's no big deal. You want a little piece of um, felt. <laughs> this is about two and a half inches wide by, what do you call it, about four and a half inches long. This is going to make a size similar to this one, but again, you can, this is a recipe, so you can size up or down, no big deal. You need some Halloween scraps, uh, sewing scraps, and matching thread, or as close as you can get. This is the closest I have. Uh, pins and sewing needles, and of course, scissors. So once you get all your supplies together, you're going to use your serrated scissors and locate something on your scrap that would work well. Um, for example, this is really nice. Uh, we've got, um, I made a couple here, but anything like this that be the right size that would fit in the center of your bag. See what I did there? And if you notice, like these dresses, I actually, you end up losing some fabric when you, when you do this. Um, these are two different types of fabric and I had to uh, you know cut so this fits on perfectly here at the top and so you get you get some quite a bit of scraps when you do that kind of thing but um, it's worth it because it looks really cute and then you can use the scraps to do things like here's a pocket on this or like I said you know make your little trick-or-treat bag so I did a couple already I've got them cut out I use my serrated scissors but like I said you if you want to you could have them raw that's not a big deal this is cotton fabric so it's pretty easy to, uh, you know, make the, the edges raw. And then, you know, pick the one that you want. Let's see how this would look. That would look pretty cute. This is bigger, like a weird bat looking guy. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the boo though. Okay. Once you've, once you've uh, cut out your decoration that you're gonna have on your tote bag, um, Fold it over so you have an idea of the top and the bottom. And let me see, I'll take a pair, a, uh, just so I can mark here. I'm not going to pin it together, but that's my bottom. All right. And you notice I created a little sort of faux handle here at the top. So you want, you want to make sure that you don't have your fabric too high up when you stitch it on because then you won't have room for the handle. So pretty far down, almost to the bottom there. If you see this is very close to the bottom. You want to leave a good half an inch or so um, so that you can make the handles later. So you're going to figure out where you want it. It doesn't even have to be perfectly straight. You, could, you can make it kind of sideways if you want. Um, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. Like this would kind of be cute like that. But I'm going to try to center it. All right, and I'm going to get another pin. I'm going to just pin it in place. And I will thread a needle and be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm using contrasting thread, so uh, I was almost going to use the yellow, and I thought, no, I can see how I used black on here. And, you know, this is this is Halloween, so it doesn't have to be all super perfect looking. In fact, it looks kind of better, I think, if you have it look like, you know, I don't know, 
like some sort of zombie person made this. <laughs> okay, so I doubled my thread. I've got a knot on the end and you're just really tacking this down so it doesn't come off. And this is very challenging to do this in front of the camera like this, but I'm going to attempt it here. I'm just going to do a little running stitch here. Alright, I don't need this anymore. You could do a whip stitch, you could do whatever, whatever stitch feels comfortable to you. And, oops, oopsie, I might be in trouble here. Shoot. There we go, okay. And I'm going to go down and up. And you, you get the idea, you're just going to go all the way down here, all the way down here, all the way down here, and then finish in the back with a knot. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm done. Um, you can see I've got it just stitched on here. And um, I meant to say this if I didn't already. You can do this on the machine if you're the type of person that would rather uh, use your sewing machine than hand stitch. Definitely, you could just place this on there, pin it, and stitch all around on the top of it. Um, I'm going to do all of this by hand, but the next step you could also do on your machine if that's uh, better for you. I will say it would be, uh, probably the stitching would be a little tighter if you did it on the machine. I've done both. For, for this one, I did this part by hand and then this part on my machine. But for the purposes today, I'm going to do it all by hand. So the next thing you're going to do is fold it in half and just to keep it together, I'm going to put a couple pins in here. Alright, so this is the top. I'm not going to stitch the top. I'm going to stitch from the bottom up and the bottom up. Um, also, you know what, before I go too much further, let me go ahead and move this down a little bit. And again, this is personal preference. You can do this or not do this. If you notice this, I have tapered a little bit. So at this point, since I have it together, I'm going to take my scissors. In fact, let me get my bigger scissors. This will be a little bit easier. And I'm just going to taper off the edges a little bit, round them a teensy bit. There you go. And there you go. You can see it's not perfectly together. It doesn't have to be if that bothers you. You can trim it off a little bit like that. All right, so now I'm just going to go like up to about here. All right, because remember, we want to have room for our handle. Let me show you again. See how this has, this is right here, so your handle's in here. So you, if I sewed all the way up, it would be like to here. And it would be harder to open it. These are actually working little tote bags. So you could put candy in there if you wanted. All right, let me get that out of the way. And I have some yellow thread. I'm not doubling it now. I'm using, oh, that's the wrong one. That's pink. Okay, here's the yellow. <laughs> it probably it's hard to see a little bit, but I want this to actually look good when I'm finished. But you can see this is, this is yellow thread. It's almost the same exact color as the felt, but... Um, so I'm going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to do a whip stitch all the way up. Again, you can do any type of stitch you want. I think the whip stitch, and I'm not going to, this isn't a lesson on how to whip stitch, so Google it. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of videos out there that are really good about how to show whip stitching. But for me, the whip stitch would be a little bit more secure and you can get your stitches in kind of tight because you do, you don't want to have holes. All right. So I'm just going to go like that. And it doesn't have to look great because this is going to be on the inside. After you do this, you're going to you're going to turn it in um, right side out. Okay, because this is really the this is the wrong side. The right side is in here where your um, little decorations at. Okay, so I am just going to whip it, whip it good, all the way up. And I'm not going to film me doing this because this is like watching paint dry. 
and I will be back in a minute when I have a little bit more done. Back, I stitched up both sides. Again, I used uh, yellow thread, so you can't really see it that well. And I just, I just did a super tight whip stitch. But you could do this on the sewing machine if you wanted. And now you're going to turn it inside out. Be careful. I mean, you don't want to rip what you just did. Whip it like that. Using my fingers here. If you wanted to get it more pointy, I mean, I don't mind it looking like this. It's supposed to be kind of like a little bag, but you could do something like take some pliers or a chopstick, but be really careful because you don't want to poke a hole through what you just did because <laughs> that would not be fun. There would be a big bummer. All right, so now we just have to add the handle. And if you notice, all that is is a hole. I'm sure there's plenty of other cool ways that you could create a handle, but this is what I came up with in a in a pinch. And I pretty much just kind of find out where the center's at, and I have these handy little ginger scissors. They're super pointy. And this is very thin, by the way, because there's different thicknesses of felt, but this is just 33 cent squares that I bought at Michael's, okay? So it's not the heavier felt. And I'm just going to... Take my pointy scissors and punch a little hole carefully. Make it small at first. Go on the other side, find the hole. And you just real carefully, you don't want to poke your finger. And now I'm going to take and open it up a little bit. I'm not cutting really at this point. I'm just moving my finger, my scissors around, and they're sharp, so. And now I'm going to put them in together and make it bigger. And you just keep messing and messing with it until you get it the size that you want. And like I said, it depends. You could you could put candy in this and set it down. But if you want to be able to put a doll's hand in it, then you want to kind of make it bigger. But you don't want to cut that part after all of this. All right, I'll go get a doll and um, show you this with her. I think I'm going to mess with this a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit bigger, but honestly, it's really hard for me to do this while looking through the camera. So I'm going to just keep doing that until I get it the size I want, and I'll be right back with the doll. Back, I made the hole bigger, and I wanted to show you this one. I actually, you can see I cut it. Let's see, you can, there, see how it's cut like a diamond shape? This one, I poked it. So if I remember correctly, I I poked this one like this and then I folded it and cut and cut. Just be really careful when you do that that you still leave a little bit up there. So I'm going to do that next because this does actually fit on her hand a little bit. It just depends. Like I can, if I wanted to stage, you know, take some photographs of her, I could put her hand in like that and it, it works for her. But if I make it a little bit bigger, it'll go all the way over her hand and up her arm and especially if you have dolls that have uh, you know maybe the jointed bodies or something and you want to make it bigger then you would want to cut it okay so uh, yeah let me go do that real quick on this one and I'll be right back to show you so see it can go all the way up her hand now which would probably make it easier when you're you know trying trying to take photographs um, of your dolls you can see it just it's not going to come off that easily so yeah, that's how you make a one six scale, uh, Blythe, Leica, Barbie, whatever you wanna call it, trick or treat bag for your dollies. I hope you found this to be helpful and I'd love to see some pictures if anybody makes any of these. Uh, feel free to post them over on my Kauai Doll Shop Facebook page or send them to me and I'll post them for you. And that's it, have a wonderful dolly day. Thanks for watching and Trick or treat. Woo